For NNN Sports, I'm Miles Miller. Coming up on Sports Night. The baseball team headed to Bloomington, Indiana for their first Big Ten tournament in 10 years. Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones said before the draft that the team needed some, quote, war daddies on the defensive side of the field. And Joe Jones can certainly be one of those for the Cowboys, so look out for big things from both of these guys coming into the league. The great poet Beyonce once said, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. Well, that's what Northwestern did with Chris Collins and Pat Fitzgerald. Both coaches received lengthy contract extensions from the university. I mean, I am the president of the men's club volleyball team here at Northwestern. So yeah, I dabble, but I'm nowhere near the level of the real volleyball team. Coming off a huge comeback victory against Michigan in Ann Arbor, the volleyball team returned back to Evanston to face seventh ranked Minnesota. This past weekend, the Cats took a trip down to Norman, Oklahoma to compete in the ITA kickoff. Their first matchup was against the Sooners of Oklahoma. These are all true. It's also the first time I've worn this tie with this shirt. But on a sports related note, the men's basketball team had a historical first this week. The men's basketball team took to Columbus on Sunday to face The Ohio State University. The Cats were looking for another statement win in their quest for an NCAA tournament bid. This year, through dropping the puck on cancer, Northwestern raised nearly $3,000 for the American Brain Tumor Association. For those of you who don't know, the fencing team is on fire. Seriously, don't get too close or you'll come away with third degree burns. They went 10 and 1 at the DeChicho duels in the past this past weekend in South Bend and have won not five, not six, not seven, eight in a row. Up next, we trade our baseball bats for drivers and putters as we see how the women's golf team fared in the NCAA championships. Let's face it, the men's basketball team is not what we expect them to be this season. After going dancing for the first time last season, this year the squad looks like they have two left feet. Thanks, Max. I caught up with the Athletes in Action organization on campus to find out how they combine sports and spirituality. The wrestling team fell to the Michigan Wolverines Sunday in a lopsided 38-10 defeat. The Cats dropped to 6-4 overall and 1-3 in Big Ten play. The team is back in action this Friday night against the Indiana Hoosiers. So, Miles, Super Bowl Sunday is only a few days away. What are your predictions for the big game? Well, you know, Jared, as a lifelong Patriots fan, I got to go with my boys from New England. Wait, aren't you from Chicago? Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, and tune in next week for another edition of Sports Night. Maryland continued to put on offensive pressure on the Cats' defense as Taylor Hench beats her defender, takes it to the goal. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. The Cats wouldn't go down without a fight, however, as Christina Esposito charges toward the goal in which way? That way. She scores with a sweet backhand shot to cut Maryland's lead to eight. We take you to game two of the series. Start off with Hank Christie on the mound, putting in work as he strikes out Maryland's Madison Nickens. Game. Now in the top of the third, catcher Nick Pachorek steps up to the plate and blasts one in the center field. A little souvenir for the fans. Catch trail two to one. Bottom of the fourth, Hank Christie asks Madison Nickens, may I help you? No thanks. Just looking. Christie gets the strikeout and Cats lead three to two. Top of the fifth now, and the floodgates start to open for the Cats as Connor Lynn loops one in the short center. Cats extend the lead to eight runs. Could the Cats put up a good performance against the Cornhuskers? Was that too corny? Let's see the highlights. NCAA record 360th straight sellout at Memorial Stadium Saturday. Mid second quarter, Jer Jeremy Larkin gets the handoff and does his best MC Hammer impression and says, Nope, can't touch this, and runs 24 yards for his third career touchdown. Cats led. Joe Gaziano rocks Nebraska QB Tanner Lee. Gawin and Gabuke there with his second interception of the year. 13 plays later, Thorson making it happen with his legs. Rushes it in from seven yards out. Tie ball game at that point, and the game went to overtime. Isaiah Brown passes it to Gavin Skelly, who sets up for the jumper, and bottom. Skelly nails the two, and you up 36-31 at the half. Looks like there are threes in the forecast. Sanjay Lumpkin with a pass to Scotty Lindsay, who scores another triple for the Cats. Later, Isaiah Brown drives into the lane, steps through, scores two. Cats up 61-58. Buckeyes trying to get some offense going. Passes it back, but Isaiah Brown is all over that ball. He gets the cookies and gets the milk. Northwestern looking for a statement win in Ann Arbor. Cats get it going early with a little pick and roll action. 
Brian McIntosh finds Scotty Lindsay, who blows past the defender and throws it down. Watch your head, young fella. And finally, Mords Wagner hits the lefty hook. Drive home safely, folks. Michigan wins 58-47. The Cats return to action next Friday as they head to College Park to take on the University of Maryland. For NNN Sports, I'm Miles Miller. The Wildcats bounce back from a lackluster performance against Duke with a prolific offensive explosion against Bowling Green with a 49-7 victory. The Cats set a school record with 9.2 yards per play and Clayton Thorson set a new career high with 370 yards passing. Hi guys, I'm Miles Miller. I'm here at The Rock for another edition of Rock Talk. I'm chatting with Wildcats students about the Super Bowl. Let's see what they have to say. Signing off at The Rock for NNN Sports, I'm Miles Miller. Up next for the Cats is a bye week as they prepare to face the Wisconsin Badgers in Madison for their first Big Ten matchup of the season. The Cats got out to an early 6-0 lead with a pin from freshman Anthony Rubinetti. But the Fighting Illini were able to storm back and win the match 28 to 15. What are you doing? I gotta get this on Snapchat. Come on, Jenny. You know uh, how I do. Not now. We gotta say goodbye first. We gotta say goodbye first. Well, that's it for me here at The Rock. Signing off for NNN Sports. I'm Miles Miller.